Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about endotracheal tube. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. An endotracheal tube is a flexible tube that is placed in the trachea through the mouth or nose for the primary purpose of establishing and maintaining a patent airway. The other end of the endotracheal tube is connected to a ventilator which controls the patient's breathing and delivers oxygen to the lungs. Endotracheal tubes are made of plastic, specifically polyvinyl chloride. Endotracheal tubes are used for intubation for the following reasons. First comes breathing support. An endotracheal tube can support breathing in patients with respiratory disease conditions, example, pneumonia, respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, etc., or other conditions that affect breathing. Next is surgery. During surgery, when patients are under general anesthesia, the lungs are paralyzed. Intubation allows the tubes to be connected to a mechanical ventilator which assists with the breathing. Next is foreign object obstruction. Endotracheal intubation can help remove a foreign object lodged in the airway. Next comes airway protection. An endotracheal tube prevents aspiration of the contents from the stomach getting into the lungs during a massive gastrointestinal bleeding. Next comes parts of endotracheal tube. First is the bevel. Endotracheal tube has an angle or slant at the tip which is known as a bevel. The bevel helps the users to visualize the vocal cords during intubation and easy access into the trachea. The bevel is usually left facing. Next is the Murphy eye. At the tip of the endotracheal tube, there is an additional opening which is called Murphy's Eye. The Murphy Eye provides an alternate passageway for gas exchange. When the end of the endotracheal tube gets obstructed or blocked, gas exchange occurs through the Murphy's Eye. Next comes the cuff. A cuff is an inflatable balloon at the distal end of the endotracheal tube. The inflated cuff produces a seal against the tracheal wall. This prevents gastric contents from entering the trachea and promotes positive pressure ventilation. The normal endotracheal cuff pressure varies between 20 to 30 cm water. When the cuff pressure is underinflated, that is, which is less than 22 cm H2O, it may lead to slip down of subglottic secretion into the lungs and there may be loss of positive end expiratory pressure and inadequate ventilation. If the cuff is overinflated, that is, if it is more than 30 cm water, there may be trauma of the tracheal mucosa which can cause ulceration or stenosis. There are two types of cuff, that is, high volume, low pressure cuffs and low volume high pressure cuffs next comes valve and the pilot balloon the cuff is inflated through a spring loaded valve with a lower lock connector just above this is a pilot balloon which visually confirms the cuff inflation but ideally cuff pressure should be checked by a cuff pressure manometer next is the connector the proximal tip of the endotracheal tube has a standard 15 mm connector. This connector attaches the endotracheal tube to the mechanical ventilator through a breathing circuit. And sometimes between a breathing circuit and endotracheal tube, a catheter mount will be placed. Next comes the tube diameter. The endotracheal tube's size refers to the internal diameter of the endotracheal tube. It is usually measured in terms of millimeters.
from the picture it is given id 7.5 that is the internal diameter is 7.5 millimeter and od is 10 that is the outer diameter is 10 millimeter and hence the internal diameter will be the size of the endotracheal tube next comes the length of the endotracheal tube the endotracheal tube is measured from the distal end of the tube and is typically marked in 2 cm increments as shown in the picture that is 18, 20, 22 and so on. Next comes the radio opaque line. Radio opaque line makes it easier to visualize the placement on x-ray. This radio opaque line extends all the way to the tip of the endotracheal tube. Remember that endotracheal tube is made of polyvinyl chloride which is not radio opaque and hence this radio opaque line which is blue in color helps to visualize the placement during a chest x-ray. The other features of the endotracheal tube is the presence of a subglottic suction port. There is an opening above the endotracheal tube cuff. When secretions are accumulated above the cuff, it can be aspirated through a syringe which is attached to the subglottic suction port. Few more points to remember about the endotracheal tube are The curvature of the endotracheal tube is called Magill curve radius and there are endotracheal tube without cuff in case of pediatric use. So here you go with parts of the endotracheal tube. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.